In this video, we're going to go through section 10.7, which is testing a claim about a mean difference. So in this video, I'm going to go through the example as follows. An avid traveler is investigating whether travel websites differ in their pricing. She chooses a random sample of 32 hotel rooms from across the state and notes the price of each room for site A and site B. The mean difference, site A minus site B, in the prices for the rooms is $5.49 with a standard deviation of $18.65. Assuming the conditions for inference have been met, is there evidence that the prices of hotel rooms from site A and B are different on average? Use a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. So they're telling us the conditions are met, so we're not going to check that, but we are going to write out the null and alternative hypothesis. So with mean difference, we aren't identifying each mean separately. We're talking about them as... Um, a unit as a mean themselves. So our null hypothesis is that that variable mu di, mu sub diff is equal to zero. So our assumption is always that they're it's they're the same, right? That there's no difference. Um, and then our alternative hypothesis is given to us in the sentence somehow. So if I'm looking at this, they tell me that they are different. So are different means that this inequality is going to be a not equal inequality. So not a less than, not a greater than, it's not equal. Remember that mu sub diff is the true mean. Difference in costs. If we're doing A minus B of room prices. So they're different means not equal. That also means that our um, significance level is going to be higher than, um, sorry, our p-value is going to be higher than the one that we get from the table. So this adds kind of an extra layer of a step within our problem. So um, we are given the following information. Remember that we need the average of the data. We need the mean difference value that we assumed in the null hypothesis. We need the standard deviation of the data and we need the size of the data. And so all of those things are given to us. Remember that we assumed here that mu diff is zero. So we're gonna plug a zero in for that value. Looking at the rest of this, 32 is our n, and I'm not going to write the subscripts. I'm just going to write the variables. Um, the mean is 5.49, so that's our x bar, and the standard deviation, or s, is 18.65. So let's plug those values into our equation for t. So t is equal to the 549 minus 0. over our 18.65 divided by the square root of 32. 32 was the n and then 18.65 was our standard deviation. So if we plug in these values, that gives us a value for t of about 0 0.052. So remember that what we also need to figure out is degrees of freedom. Remember that that's n minus one. And so if our n is 32, that means that our degrees of freedom 
is supposed to be 31. Since 31 is not on our table, we're gonna round down and use 30. Remember that we always round down, even if it was closer to 40, even if it was 39, we would pick 30 and round down that way. So then if we're looking at the table, we're looking at just this row where degrees of freedom is 30. And we're looking for our T value. So our T value here was this 0 0.0052. So if I think about where that number is, that number is here. So our T value is less than the 0.683 that is the smallest number on that graph, or sorry, on that table. And so what that means is that our P value, so notice that as we're looking over here, this is less than this value. The, the, um, the p-values are increasing. So that means that if I was picking a number that was over here, which is where my p-value would be, it would be greater than 0.25. Remember that the way that this is working is that this is giving us this percentage, but because we were doing a, um, a hypothesis test that is looking for if they're different, that means we also want this side. So what we're gonna have to do is double our p-value to really be accurate. It's not gonna change our conclusion in this case, but because we want this section as well, and it's symmetric, that means that our p-value is really greater than 0.5. Okay, so in this problem, our p-value is um, going to be a number that is greater than one half. So we're gonna use that value on the next screen to determine our conclusion. Okay, so remember that we just figured out that our p-value is greater than 0.5. And if I'm comparing that to alpha, which is 0 0.05, that means that our p-value is greater than alpha. So if the p-value is greater than alpha, that's when I fail to reject the null. which means there is not sufficient evidence that the price in hotel rooms from site A to B are different on average. So remember that it's not, like the odds of getting that result is 50% chance is what that means. And so that's not significant enough for us to say that it, they happened just by chance and that or that they are significant enough for us to say that, that happened just by chance versus it happening because our original assumption was not true.